In this video, we solve problem 12.4.016 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. We're asked to find the principal unit normal vector to the curve at the specified value of the parameter. Our curve is given by R of t, and R of t is t times i hat plus six over t times j hat. I highly recommend um, using component form. I prefer it. I write it this way. And we want the principal unit normal vector at t equals two. Now there are two approaches to doing this. In this video, I'm going to use method number two to find the principal unit normal vector. But you could also use or you could also use um, this formula for the principal unit normal vector method number one. So if I used uh, this formula, basically what I'd need to do is first compute t hat. To find t hat, that's our unit tangent vector. First, I'd have to find r prime, which is a tangent vector. Then after I find that tangent vector, I would divide by its magnitude and that would give me t hat. Now, because I need to take the derivative of t hat, I need to leave all of this in terms of t, which means I'm gonna have a square root of, of a sum of components squared here. And all of those are going to be functions of t. We're not gonna be able to simplify that very well. Um, so we'll have sort of a complicated expression in the denominator for each of the components of t hat. Now, in order to find n hat, I need to compute t hat prime. So I need to leave this with those complicated expressions involving t and compute the derivative component by component. Now, at that point, I could take the magnitude of that derivative vector as a function of t and then divide and find n hat of t and then substitute in t equals 2 at the end. But it simplifies things a lot if we can plug in this value of the parameter t equals 2 as soon as possible. Since all we want is n hat at 2 and not just n hat at multiple values of lowercase t or um, not n hat in general, I would suggest after you compute t hat prime, evaluating that at t equals 2. Then you'll have a vector with components um, and those components are just going, going to be numerical values. They're just numbers, scalars. Um, and once you've got that vector with uh, numerical components, you can find its magnitude and that's pretty easy. Then you'll take this vector and you'll divide by the magnitude component by component and that will give you n hat at two. So there's a lot of differentiation involved here. You're probably gonna have to use the quotient rule when you take the derivative of the components of t hat and you'll have the quotient rule with the chain rule because in the denominator, you'll have the square root of a sum of squared functions of t. So there's a lot of calculus here, just calculus one and um, der derivative rules, the, the quotient rule and the chain rule um, that you'll be using over there. So that's one approach to finding n hat at two. I recommend using the fact that the acceleration vector can be broken down in this way. We know it is or it can be written as a constant times the unit tangent plus a constant times the unit normal. The benefit of this approach is that the computation is easier because we get to plug in t equals two sooner. Now we're looking for n hat at t equals two. In order to find n hat at t equals two, I need to find a at t equals two, t hat at t equals two. Once I've got those two, I can use that to compute a sub t at t equals two. Once I have that, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find a sub n at t equals two. And then we can just take this equation and solve for n hat um, to get n hat at t equals two. Now, this might be more challenging to think about. It might be a little bit harder to remember what you're supposed to do next, but it's all based on this triangle. Um, the computation itself is easier. So you kind of have to pick your poison. Like, would you rather think about these concepts and do the easier computations, or would you rather do the more involved computations um, for something that is conceptually simple? All you're trying to do is find t hat prime and divide by its magnitude and evaluate this over here. Uh, so it's up to you, but I highly recommend method number two. We're gonna use method number two in this video. Okay, so our first um, task is to find the acceleration vector and we're going to evaluate it at t equals two. So I'll use r of t equals this, and I'll rewrite that y component as six times t to the negative one. 
and then it'll be easier to take the first and second derivative from there. The derivative of t is just one. Take the derivative of this, bring the power down, multiply by t to the one less power. That's our velocity vector. If we want acceleration, that's our double prime. We just take the derivative again. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of that second component requires the power rule. Negative six times negative two is positive 12. And we'll have t to the one less power. So that's t to the negative three. Now I want this at t equals two because I am going to solve this equation for n hat at t equals two. So I'll evaluate this at t equals two now. And I'll rewrite that 12 times t to the negative three is 12 times, or 12 divided by t cubed. And I'll plug in t equals two. And we'll have 12 over eight, which simplifies to three over two. And that's my a sub or a of two, the acceleration vector at t equals two. Okay, now I also need, in order to find a sub t, I need t hat at t equals two. So I'll find r prime at t equals two and divide by the magnitude of r prime at t equals two. Okay. Now r prime of t is right there. So I'll write that as one times i hat plus negative six over t squared times j hat. And then I'll evaluate at t equals two. So that gives me this vector. We can divide that by two and get three, divide that by two and get two. And now that we've got our prime at two, we can find its magnitude. Take the components, square them and add them and take the square root. Square the numerator and denominator separately. That's gonna give us a nine over four. For this one, we can write as itself over one and get a common denominator. We want the denominator to be four, so we'll multiply by four over four. Now that the denominators are the same, add the numerators, keep the common denominator. We've got the square root of a fraction. Take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator separately. And of course, the square root of four is just two. Okay. Now I want t hat at t equals two. So I'll just take this vector and I'll divide by the scalar. Now dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And you multiply a vector by a scalar component by component. So we'll have three or two over root 13 and the twos will reduce over here and we'll have negative three over root 13 as our y component. Okay, before we go any further, let's write down what we did. We computed r prime and we computed the acceleration vector, which was r double prime. And then we computed a of two. So we evaluated a at t equals two. And then we wanted t hat at t equals two. So we computed r prime at two, and we computed the magnitude of r prime at two. And then we divided. So t hat at two is right here. Okay, now we're going to use those, this acceleration vector and t hat to find a sub t. Now, a sub t is, 
whoops, a sub t is a scalar. It's the dot product of the acceleration vector and the unit tangent. But we want it at t equals two. So we'll just take this vector and this vector. And take the dot product. You'll have this times this plus this times this. Of course, zero times anything is zero. Multiply straight across over here, you're going to have nine, negative nine over two times the square root of 13. That is our a sub t at t equals two. Okay, so going back to our formulas. So far we've got acceleration, we've got a sub t, we've got t hat. The only unknowns here are a sub n and n hat. To find a sub n, um, what I would recommend is using the Pythagorean theorem. This side squared plus this side squared equals that side squared. So solving for a sub n, we have a sub n is the square root of the magnitude of a squared um, minus a sub t squared. And we've got this and we've got that, so we can find that. So we have the acceleration vector at time t equals two is this. Excuse me. Clearly, its magnitude is just three over two because this is just 1.5 units in the y direction. If you're just thinking of that as a vector, of course, you could take the components, square them, and add them, and take the square root, and you're still going to get three over two. So it's up to you. Then we want to square that. We're going to say at time t equals two, a sub n is the square root of that magnitude squared minus a sub t at t equals two squared. So we'll have three over two squared minus a sub t, which was right here, negative nine over three times the square root of thir or two times the square root of 13 squared. Square this fraction, we'll get nine over four. Square that fraction, we'll get 81 over four times 13. We need a common denominator, so we'll multiply by 13 over 13. And we'll multiply nine times 13 is 117. We'll subtract the 81, that'll give us 36 over four times 13. Four goes into 36 nine times, and we're taking the square root. Square root of nine is three, square root of 13 can't be simplified. So that's a sub n at t equals two. All right, so we have this and this and this and this. The only unknown here is n hat at time t equals two. So we will just take this vector, subtract this vector, divide by that scalar, and we'll get n hat. And that's not a dot product because that's a scalar times a vector. Acceleration vector, it's this. A sub t at t equals two was a negative. We're subtracting something negative, so that means we're adding nine over two times the square root of 13 times the vector t at t equals two. And we're taking all of that and we're dividing by this. Okay. First, I would distribute that nine over two times the square root of 13. The twos will reduce for that first one. So we'll end up with nine over 13. And for the second one, we'll have, or that second component, we'll have negative 27 over two times 13. 
Now we've got two vectors in the numerator now. You wanna add component by component, zero times or zero plus uh, nine over 13 is of course nine over 13. And here we've got three over two minus 27 over two times 13. Multiply by 13 over 13. And we'll divide by three over root 13. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. This, is, this will be 39 minus 12, which is, or minus 27, which is 12 over uh, two times 13. Two goes into 12 six times. And then we'll just distribute. We end up with a nine over three, that'll simplify to a three in the numerator times the square root of 13 over 13. And then we'll have the six over three, which will give us a two in the numerator times square root of 13 over 13. So that is our n hat at two. Or if you use a different method and you had not rationalized, that's the same as three over root 13 times i hat plus two over root 13 times j hat. That is method number two. I highly recommend it. The computation is relatively straightforward. You just have to remember um, sort of the trig. Um, with the trig, it's, it's clear, I think, that the tangential component of acceleration is obviously the projection of A onto T hat and the projection of A onto T hat is just that dot product. So you compute the dot product, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the other side of that triangle. Um, and once you have all of these pieces, you can solve for N hat. I will use a different video to um, demonstrate method number one. Please let me know if you have any questions about this problem.